Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. You are here at Wholesaling 101. I'm sorry we're a little bit late. That is my problem. I actually have a very smoky room today because my fire is getting air that's going the wrong direction. So um, thank you guys for being patient. That's not going to stop us from finding deals today and giving you guys as much value as possible in your wholesaling business. Hi, Benson. How you doing? I'm great. I'm, I'm concerned for you, though. I mean... <laughs> Maybe the house isn't on fire, but that smoke going into those lungs is not a great thing. Luckily, I have my husband hustling around me right now, opening windows and changing the airflow so that I can be here for everybody. Awesome. Well, thanks for bearing through that for us. Happily. I mean, it is freezing up here in the mountains. It has been very very cold so we've got fires going in both of our house most of the time and today i think the wind is just going the wrong direction yeah crazy hey, well, i'm glad everything's okay there um you guys can we get a, a thumbs up some stars some hearts for Corianne and really powering through for us like she could have easily just been like you guys i'm sorry i got an issue here um but she's here with us so let's get some some thumbs up some some acknowledgement for her powering through for us <laughs> thank you i appreciate that benson i also my mentor is jamil and if ever there is a king of showing up no matter what it is jamil so i try to bring that mm -hmm. same energy as much as possible absolutely um, everybody welcome i'm so glad you're here because today we're going to have a ton of fun I had posted a reel on Instagram that just brought up the fact that sometimes you hit those really weird questions when you're on the phone with agents and you don't quite know how to move forward in them. But really, the answer is to just tell them you don't know and you're going to go find out. And so today I'm hoping that you engage with us as we go after a few agents, but also throw in the questions that you might have about, hey, I ran into this with an agent you know, weeks ago and this is this is how it kind of stumbled over it so that hopefully we can help you get over those humps here on the hump day. If you are super, super new and you do not know what wholesaling is, you don't, you don't even understand what it is. I want you to drop a one. If you completely get it and you just need that first deal and it's about getting to that first deal, will you drop me a two? And then if you are here and you are a wholesaler with an exclamation point and you are at three plus deals, will you please let me know and drop a three? I just want to know where everybody's at today so that we're definitely bringing you what you need to grow. How's the nice. year kicked off for you so far, Benson? Uh, it's going really good. Um, look at all those twos. That's, that's really good to see the twos. Um, for me, it's going great. I just actually last night I was at an event. We just launched a new meetup in Denver. Um, it is the uh, Colorado Cash Flow Club. And um, it is basically like a um, I wouldn't call it a franchise, but it's it's there's multiple hubs all across the country. Maybe people have heard of it. Um, and we just launched the first hub in Colorado. So me and actually some people that maybe some people here know are part of it. Um, so that was really fun. Last night was our launch event. So it's really cool because it's it's more of just like then it's more than a RIA, like where you just go and sit and you listen to people talk. It's really like action. You know, it's hands on. Last night we handed out um, we handed out worksheets on on how to go out and actually calculate your construction costs and, and put together like a brief scope of work, so you could mm -hmm. determine what the costs were there and then eventually end up with your maximum allowable offer. So we actually had, like I had a working session during this, along with networking and, and other education. So it was really cool. The first one. So we're doing it once a month, and there's these. Um, if you guys are interested in something like that, check it out. It's called the um, the Breakfast Cash Flow Club. It used to be in the morning, so they just kept the name Breakfast. But it's nationwide, and they're actually looking for other people who want to launch those in their market. So if anybody here is interested in in that, um, you can check it out online. Yeah. And do you is that a monthly event? It's monthly. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. I feel like I learn the most in those fireside chat environments where everybody's just kind of throwing in what their week was like and, and what is changing for them. So maybe I'll have to drive down to Denver and join you one time. 
Yeah, the next one is the 6th of February. If anyone here is in Denver, we'd love to have you guys. That's awesome. And again, they're all over the country. So there's, there's a good chance there's one in your, your city or your state. Well, it looks like we have a couple ones. So we want to catch them up a little bit so they know what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll jump straight into making sure that everybody that dropped a two is learning from exactly our favorite software as to how to find that first deal and get it through the loop. So for Vicki, Oliver, Bernie, the ones that dropped the one, you're like, what am I here? What is wholesaling? What is, how can I learn? Um, wholesaling is actually a way of selling a property. What you're doing is you're getting equitable interest in that property by going under contract with the seller. And then you're selling that equitable interest to the end buyer and wholesaling is the name for that term and where you're making money in the middle. Anything you would add to that, Benson? Um, I guess the main thing there is that within the contract itself, there has to be an instrument that you can leverage to transfer control of mm -hmm. that contract to another person. So the end buyer, you guys have heard about building your buyer's list. Mm -hmm. So when you go and build your buyer's list, you want people who are actually capable of executing and closing on a deal. They need the, the funding, they need the, um, the experience, they need the ability to actually, you know, just transact and close. Uh, but when you try when you when you find that deal, you, there has to be either an assignment or some other instrument to be able to transfer control of that contract to that end buyer. That's the key. And it's usually an assignment, but you can double close or you can use other entities like um, an LLC or a trust, which is a little bit more complicated, but that's, that's the key in, in transferring it. I'm glad you're bringing this up because in a lot of ways, I think many people who are starting in wholesaling are thinking, let me just go get a contract. But the most important thing is truly the buyer on the other side. Cause I see myself as a personal shopper. I get to meet my buyer. I get to find out what kind of properties they want. And then I go shopping for those particular properties to get under contract. So knowing the market that you're in, knowing how to find buyers and and even like how to engage with them so that you understand really what they're purchasing and then going to get that contract equitable interest assignability and then over and assign to your end buyer yep absolutely and you guys that and we could this is a discussion people have this debate all the time what's more important the deal or the buyer i am actually a firm believer that the buyer is the most important piece of the contract because you could be the best marketer in the world and you could have leads till you know your eyes fall out of your head. But if you don't have an M buyer who wants that, then it doesn't matter. So the M buyer and knowing what they want is is likely the one of the most important pieces, but it's all connected. And once you have your buyer is in place and you know what they want, like Corian described, you know, being kind of a personal shopper, then you can go out and start finding quote unquote deals because a deal is different for everyone. Right. So you might have a buyer who says, you know what, I want any house that's in this zip code. I'll pay full price just as long as it cash flows 200 bucks a month. I don't care about discounts. I don't care about anything else. And so just knowing that you go out, you could find deals. Whereas 90% of all the other wholesalers out there would pass up on a house that was at retail because they think it's not a deal. But a deal is only what buyers are wanting. Yeah. And we've said that a few times when we're looking at properties and helping people comp on privy we'll point out quite often like oh well this might be the right deal if there are buyers that are buying that way but specifically it's not in the general bucket of buyers um so a deal is a deal with a buyer and that's why often bringing value um by even just having a few buyers that you know incredibly well is a great way to enter into this business is to find app people that have the contracts and bring the value by bringing the buyer to them Yep, absolutely. Um, Gail, I hear you. I will talk louder. Thank you. Um, okay, so guys, today we're going to use my favorite software to be able to find buyers and find acquisition and any kind of contracts and deals you're after. And that is Privy. If you don't have Privy, I highly suggest you get it. Um, we even have a promo code for you. It is Damji. If you use that name um, in the promo code, then you're going to get 30% off the annual plan or 20% off that first month. And with that, can we jump straight in? Do you mind driving for us today, Benson? Of course, of course. Show us what we're looking at when we just first pop in. They're completely brand new. What are these colors? What are these numbers? 
Yeah, when you when you first get into the the software, it could be a little overwhelming because you're not quite sure what you're looking at. Uh, but basically, this is just the coverage map. You can access this view at any time by going over here to the left and clicking this little button here that says Privy Coverage. That's also a reset button. So you ever get stuck in the software and you're like, oh man, I don't even know what I buttons I pushed and I'm, you know, I'm not getting the results I want or that I expect. Just come down here and click Privy Coverage and that will kind of reset everything for you and then you can start from scratch. Okay, uh, but basically this is a map of the coverage sources of data that we bring into Privy. So uh, we have you know public record data, we got owner information, mortgage information, deed data, off market leads like foreclosures and vacancies. Um, but we what we do is we layer on top of that the same data that agents and appraisers use in their business. So that's the direct to MLS data, and we have raw data that comes in from the MLSs that are in these blue areas. So wherever you see blue is where we've got those direct to MLS data feeds. Now we do have uh, third party MLS data in these areas, like in Wyoming and in Idaho, it's just not as up to date and accurate. And it doesn't include photos like these areas in blue. So the, the data that you're accessing and say like Boise right now in Privy would be similar to what you see in like a prop stream or batch leads. So you're just, you don't get that quite extra dive in um, but for example, I know that Randy had commented that he's in Washington state. It looks like the MLS is coming soon in Washington. It is. Well, we're working on it and it says coming soon, soon is relative. Uh, but the, the MLS that's in the, the Seattle market is one of the more difficult ones we've ever worked with. Uh, just lots of hoops to jump through. They're very resistant to sharing their data. And so we're having to really go through all of their compliance and, it's, it's, it's really um, quite a heavy lift for that market. But anywhere where you see pink is markets that we're working on. Awesome. And really, I think it's good to point out that even without going into the MLS or having the MLS, you're saying that your data on everywhere else is just as good as your competitors. It is. Yeah, it's the same. We've got the same data sources as a lot of companies that are out there. There's like two or three major companies that people get them from. Um, so, you know, you're going to find a similar experience in these gray areas and some other the platforms that you use, but we just weren't satisfied with that. So we wanted to scale up the quality and the accuracy and the timeliness of the data in these blue areas. And there's over 100 markets now. And I was just looking at the team. They're working on like 10 new ones right now. So expect to see a lot of these pink ones turn blue and then more pink ones to uh, show up on the map. That's so exciting. Um, so can we show people how to even start to get into markets and look at the data to know what is even going on, perhaps from the buy side? And do you mind if we start mm -hmm. in Denver? Because I've got some detailed questions about searching for buyers and I want and specifically well, in sure. Denver if you review my deals. Oh yeah. And, and I want to clarify you guys too. And, then, and we touched on this earlier. There's different kinds of buyers out there. A lot of times people think buyers are only flippers. The actual fact is that the majority of buyers out there are landlords. There's more landlord buyers out there than there are fix and flipper buyers. Now, fix and flipper buyers, if you can find good ones, will give you more volume because they'll do more mm -hmm. deals than a landlord buyer likely will. It, that's just that's kind of a blanket statement, but I think it's probably true in general. Would you disagree with that, Corianne? No, I would say that um, it every buy and hold is going to have their own decision as to how they want to move for their portfolio and whether that's going to be a few properties this year or a bunch but any flipper that's doing this full time it is going to the answer is a bunch they um, always have a number that they're trying to hit that year and i want to be a part of each one of those definitely so you want a good mix so if you want to find landlord buyers using privy then the filter you're going to use this filter down here called absentee owner so you're going to drill down into the market that you want, and then you're going to look at absentee owners. Um, the other type of buyer is fix and flip buyers. And we actually have a filter set up for that right over here, but it says fix and flip. So if I click this button right here, this will actually filter all the fix and flips that have happened in the last 12 months nationwide. And then you want to try to focus on an area that has high investor activity. The more activity there is, the more buyers there are. The more buyers there are, the more demand there is. And actually, what creates it, the, the the spread that we're looking for that fix and flippers need is the fix and flipped house that just happened 
And then the unrenovated house that's down the street or that's in the same neighborhood, that's what creates the margin. So you want to be in an area that has high investor activity so that you can use those houses that were flipped to push up the ARVs in the areas you're looking. And then all you have to do is just find the unrenovated homes in those neighborhoods. And Denver happens to be one of the areas that has, I would say, probably moderate investor activity. You can see over here in the Midwest that there's markets like Chicago that has, you know, over 3,000 deals in the past 12 months. But because we're both in Colorado and it is a good market, right? You don't have to be in the highest, but you certainly don't want to be in the lowest or in the low end of that spectrum. So let's drill down a little bit here. And then we can use these clusters as a way to guide us into which neighborhoods we're going to go in. Because not all neighborhoods are created equal. It isn't just Denver we're looking. It's specific neighborhoods. Because the goal here is, is to find a house that is unrenovated or there's a fix and flip that's close to it. So we have to be pretty tight. And when we're looking at comps, like we need a fix and flip house to be one of our comparables, it needs to be within about a half a mile. So you want to be in these aggregated areas. So when you see this map, Corianne, what area like piques your interest? So I would like to head, um, let's go into Lakewood where that 56 is. Okay. Let's follow through I there. I love Lakewood. Mm, yes, me too. Get a lot of good movement in that particular area. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, quite so a lot this of little hot pocket right here, like there's there's quite a bit going on here. This is the last 12 months. And so you can see like just right in here is even way better than just like this North Alameda area. So mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't want to look for deals in North Alameda. We, we also wouldn't want to look for deals in, you know, areas where there's just not a lot of activity in general. And when we first saw that map, Corianne, like there were some states that just had barely anything going on. So you want to avoid those areas because there's only so much time in the day. So why would you spend your time banging your head against the wall in Wyoming when you can mm -hmm. go south, you know, 200 miles into Denver and have all this activity and have everything that you need to build a deal? Absolutely. And to anybody that like dropped a two and is going after that first deal and many conversations I have with these, this grouping of people after that first deal, and I ask them, what market are you going after? Most of them give me about three or four. And the, the difficulty in that is that you can't really keep track of or keep your thumb on the pulse of exactly what neighborhood for, especially for your first deal, that you really need to be honing in on and focusing on and et cetera, et cetera. So I highly encourage all of you to use Privy, use that giant map, see where the activity is happening and name an activity area that you're gonna actually focus on. Um, and it doesn't need to be where you live, which is what's beautiful. I live all the way up in the mountains. I still service Denver three, three and a half hours away. And I promise you, I do not drive down the mountain every single time I wanna look at one of those properties. In fact, I haven't stepped foot in one since my last flip two years ago. So wow. I, you don't need it. Virtual wholesaling, as long as you understand your market and you start to get plugged in with the players there is so doable. So pick your market so that you can get into where the neighborhoods are great. Just like Lakewood. Yeah, this, this house right here was just flipped. It closed on the fourth. So that's fairly recent, but just look at how cool this is. Look, here's the house. They got this big green bell, a playground, like a little lake right here. It went for six sixty five. dollars And this report we're looking at, you guys, is called a comparative market analysis. It's just a fancy word for a property report. But I'm a licensed agent. And um, if I wanted to try to build something like this for my deals using the MLS, I, I couldn't do it. Like, I don't have all the information in one place. There isn't a comping algorithm inside of the MLS. It's all manual. But here in Privy, we do have that. So right here is the first pass, and we found six properties that are similar to the subject property, right? Comps. Comp stands for comparable, meaning it has similar property characteristics. And on the first pass, the what we call a comp is right here. So the square footage is within 15% of the of the subject property, you know, similar number of stories. It's a half a mile from the 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 uh, center of the where the subject property is located and it's all adjustable so if you're in an area where you got a really unique house maybe it's really small or it's really big and everything around it is not similar you may have to change this to get more data so you can make a decision on value but this is where we start you off at 
Mm -hmm. We also show you the rental data. So there's actually two properties in the area that are rentals and you can use this information when you're talking to your landlord buyers. So if you have a landlord buyer and they tell you, you know, we want a property to cash flow, you know, three, you know, 300 bucks a month, then we have the rental data here for you to be able to tap into. And it all comes from property management companies. So this comes from Walters and company property management. It comes with photos. So you can see like what this house that's renting for basically $2,600 a month, what condition does it need to be in so that I can pass that information on to my buyers? And then below that, we've got the before and after. So this property right here, it looks like it was purchased off market, Corianne. See, it says yeah. public record right here. There's no MLS ID. There isn't an agent there. So that means they went direct. Mm -hmm. They bought it for 425 grand. They sold it for 665, so they got it at 64% of the after repair value. Mm -hmm. Now, Nick asked a question about what is understanding your market, and now is a good time to show him because there's there's three things that I think of in terms of like how do I understand a market, and a like percentage of ARV of purchase is one of them. And right there, I just got that answer for maybe maybe this neighborhood, but certainly one buyer is willing to purchase at 64 percent of ARV. So if I click on multiple ones of those properties that have been flipped and I start to see 64, 64, 65, 66, 64, that is market analysis and understanding my market that that's the general percentage that a lot of buyers are going after. So to be able to make money, I want to buy at 64, 63, 62. Those start to become the percentage of ARV that I'm after. So that's one big thing when I think of understanding my market that that is a number that I want to know. The next thing is how long have properties been on market and how much is on market? So that's market inventory and then days on market. And both of those two statistics is telling you generally in trends where a market is going. And so you can start to look even on Privy and see, okay, here's the properties that have sold this month versus last month. We're on a trajectory of going up. Here's the ones that have listed that haven't sold. And in a lot of ways, I suggest using your agent that you've made connections with, that you are talking to about getting a deal in whatever your market is and ask them to pull that for you. I just want to know like market inventory and days on market. Do you mind sharing that with me? Cause they can also pull that from the MLS. Yeah. So right here, th this days on market, is that what you're asking for? Yeah. And I want to know that for like a lot of listings in general or listings mm -hmm. in the area, but at least I know that with this kind of flip work and the amount of effort that they put into this, it didn't take them long to sell. And that's a good sign for me and my future buyers. Oh yeah. And it's also Intel into how much Summit Investment Services LLC, how good they are, right? If this was, yeah. you know, eight months, you might start to question like, is Summit Investment Services a company that I want to work with? They're only doing one every eight months, right? Maybe this is kind of an anomaly. We don't know, but it's Intel that you can put in to your mental, you know, data bank or just, you know, mm -hmm. in general, just kind of some stuff you know about your buyers. Cause that's the next thing is it's, it's market intelligence, but it's also buyer intelligence. What do your buyers want without talking yeah. to summit? If we just saw summit on a spreadsheet someplace and we called that our buyers list, we don't know them from Adam. Right. But when we look at them in privy, we know that, okay, well, some investment will buy in Lakewood. We'll know they'll, they'll buy in this particular zip code. We know they like, they like uh, a property that would be a four to you know, about 1,900, 2,000 square feet, single family residence. Like, so we've got some intelligence and market information about them that we wouldn't have if we were just working off our standard spreadsheet that most people do. And so you want to leverage yeah. this information. The more you know about the market, the more you know about the buyers, the more confident you're going to be in reaching out to them and trying to connect. Mm -hmm. This uh, metaphor comes from our dear friend, Rocky, but it has stuck with me forever. And he said, why would you ever go shopping for a pair of pants for me if you knew or didn't know that I would never wear a flare jean? And it's like, yeah, that's a, a, like, how, how can I ever go shopping for somebody in their pants if I don't know what size they wear, if I don't know what style they like? And having this information in the background allows me to then have a conversation with summit investments that's more in depth to better understand like what is the right pair of jeans to bring you exactly 
what an off the wall analogy, but that's exactly something that Rocky would say. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh -huh. That's why we keep him around. I love Rocky. Uh, cool. So this is just one buyer, right? So the other thing that's, that's here that we can leverage is this agent right here. So Scott Wyatt was the agent. He's from your castle real estate. He is the agent that represented some investments. So if you're mm -hmm. looking for investor friendly real estate agents, you can, you can bet that Scott is investor friendly because he represented a flipper, yeah. right? So, um, is that some, an agent you would like to call? Yeah, absolutely. See if we can just start a relationship with him. Scott Wyatt. Give me one second, guys. So what, what she's doing, and we're not going to show this on the live, you guys, because we can't show people's information on the internet. But she's going to go and she's going to look at Scott Wyatt. And you can come right down here and you can just copy the very bottom here, real estate, your castle real estate, Scott Wyatt. Copy that. Or just click this thing right here that says search Google. And it's going to do a quick Google search for Scott Wyatt and show you his information. Okay. And then you're just going to reach out to Scott, connect, and then you're going to leverage the data on this house on Florida to turn that cold call into a warm call very, very quickly. And we're going to watch Corian do that. Hopefully. Hopefully Scott is not at lunch. You're muted, Corianne, in case you didn't know. I didn't know. Over here, just hammering away. It's because I took my headphones out. Um, but I wanted to say that I found him, and I also found him, and it says realtor and real estate investor. So that already gives me an entry point as to why I would reach out. Perfect. Hello. Hey, this is Corianne. Did I get Scott? This is Scott, yeah. Um, I was just looking at the 8953 West Florida Avenue in Lakewood. Is now uh -huh. a good time to pick your brain? Sure, that's fine. Um, I can see it's sold, and it's sold beautifully. Is that a flip you took on, or did you list it for another flipper? I'm sorry. Oh, no. Wait, 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 say that one more time. I'm down in that. No, no worries. Um, the find a little quiet. That's better. <laughs> so I got you. Did we, did we list it? Is that uh, your flip that? or is that one you listed for uh, an investor client? No, we, we, we did. We flipped that one. Nice. Good job. Was it a good experience for you? Um, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's always touch and go. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any such thing as an easy one anymore. So. Oh, but man. It, it worked out okay. Would you buy another one in this zip code? Um, I would, I would buy another one, um, if it, if the location was good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That, the one that we did, um, was, um, it, it right up against a park, which, which kind of gave it a little bit of a, uh, you know, a, a an advantage. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. why this one went for such a nice price. Yeah. Location, location. Yeah. It was a, a complete renovation. So everything was. We, we remodeled everything, um, and then then the location kind of it definitely carried the trade because it, it, it just, it's a joining a park. Got you. Okay, that's good yeah. to know. Um, yeah. How many flips do you guys take on? Uh, we typically do about four a year. Okay. Try, try not to get too much above that. Yeah, with a deep sigh like that one on this one, I think um, maybe staggering them out isn't such a bad idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, this one was a little bit tricky because we were uh, listing it um, over over the holidays. So yeah. between Thanksgiving and Christmas, so that's just so obviously a lousy kind. But, uh, because it, it was pretty unique and with the location, it worked out okay. Wonderful. Well, do you take on um, a lot of other investors in terms of listings? I did see that when I, I looked you up, it popped up that you are an investor. So you've got to be pretty connected in this neighborhood? Um, do, do I work with other investors? Yeah. Um, 
not really um in, in terms of selling their their, their properties no yeah. we, we kind of just do our own um i, I have worked with others uh, mostly on you know we've got we'll have properties that they may be interested in buying that we're not going to be uh flipping so that that's usually how we're involved with with other investors is just you know providing them with an opportunity to, to to get in on a property but not necessarily handling the back end transaction well you took that exactly where i want to go because i would love to be an investor in your back pocket and a good buyer for you if you run across good deals like this that you don't want to take on sure yeah okay that's no problem uh what what areas do you look uh which what areas do you focus on do you like the lakewood area or, or others i like the lakewood area for sure um but i actually go all along the front range anywhere from fort collins down to colorado springs i am in for as long as it's not along 76 and headed out into rural nothingness yep got it <laughs> i'm sure you know yep. it well yep yep okay Perfect. yeah certainly um if you um, if you want to text me over your info, we're we're, we're about to market uh, a property over in. It's actually in, in Aurora. Um, okay. Um, off you know, near I don't know what was it near, what is it Colfax and Sable Camp, but not not that horrible that area there. It's right uh, off Colfax, huh? No, no, it's 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 more. Uh, closer to between, I think, Colfax and Six on the east side of um, 225. Okay. And um, so that's 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 one that we are going to be marketing out. I think actually this this evening we're going to push that out to the um, the investors that, that we work with. Oh, perfect. That, yeah. I called so you I, right on time. Yeah, yeah, we, we can we can send that to you as well if you want to take a look at it. So, okay. and then we, we we do come across um, you know uh, properties that, that we we simply just aren't uh, interested in doing, or we just don't have the capacity to do. In which case, we can turn around and push those off to other investors. Perfect. Well, I want to be in that list, so I will shoot you off a text with my card, and then as that one um, you start to market it, let me know. I'd yep. love to take a look. We'll do. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate your time. You're Woo! There wow. were like four different angles as to how, how to utilize that contact. Um, and even my brain was going, hmm, what's the, what's the best way forward? Um, so first I'm looking at him as a potential buyer. And then when he says he does four flips and he's licensed, I'm like, the chances of me being able to bring him those four flips is, is lower. Let's say maybe I can bring him one or two of those four because he's out there looking off market. But now we strike that, we reverse it, all right, if you're only taking on four flips, what happens with the rest of them as you run across them? Hopefully he's bringing those to me and I get them wholesaled off to my buyers. That was art. That was artwork. You should be in the Louvre. That was amazing. <laughs> you, you're speaking to an artist's heart. I hope one day to invite you to come see my art in the Louvre. And it might just be me on the phone. You never know. <laughs> That's um, some, yeah, definitely some uh, different kind of art. I mean, I've, I don't go to art shows, but I see it on TV and it's like the stuff they put in art shows these days, like, I don't even know if it's art or not, but in any case, that was really good. So you guys, please put some uh, thumbs up, some hearts to give Corian, uh, just some, some props for that call. Like just how beautifully that was done. How you see how it was conversational, right? So there was no script. Right. She had an agenda. She had an idea, but she didn't have it 100 percent all mapped out. Like She kind of let Scott lead the conversation you know, based off of what he was telling her. She went di down different paths. And, you know, because like she just said that he wasn't doing, you know, more than four deals and he's not representing other investors like this guy sp a fit into a very specific um, angle. And she mm -hmm. identified that. So that's part of what you're doing there is you're almost like a detective. Right. You're there to, to learn some information, to kind of pull some information out, still keep it conversational and make sure that they're not trying to uh, escape um, in, into the real world. Because you you may never get them on the phone again. So you, you might have only one chance to make that first impression. Yeah. And the, the beauty of it is 
again, the more real you can be and know what you need going in. I am very, very clear on what I need. I always need ways of making my friends and myself money. And so if I'm, if I'm contacting this person going, how can I add value and benefit to you? And I'm coming with that energy to start. And I know how I bring value. It's by finding ugly properties. Um, and I know that I can bring value by giving him commission. If he finds that ugly property, then, then how can you not have a good conversation coming from that kind of angle? Like I'm here to benefit. And if, if today is not the day, if today you want to curse me out or today is there's something wrong, totally understand it has nothing to do with me. That little red button saves my butt. I go, I'm so sorry that I bothered you today. I'll try to call you back at a better time. Click, move forward. So any, any goosebumps you have about calling, you're so protected by that phone. There's nothing that can go on there. Absolutely. You're hundred percent insulated and you guys, there's nothing wrong with make, making mistakes. Like you, you will say the wrong thing sometimes you won't have the right answers and that's totally okay. Don't let that prevent you from getting on the phone. So, um, cool. So here's another one that I was just looking at and, you know, I was just kind of browsing through, you know, the kind of information we just gathered on that deal. And when we're doing our market research, you guys, every one of these properties right here has that same level of information. And so this is how you can build up your local market intelligence, how you become a local market expert faster than ever before. You can actually export all of this information into a spreadsheet. So if you wanted to put it into your CRM or you wanted to like work from a spreadsheet, you could, and you just click this button right here that says download and you can download these. This is only 113 properties. It's just the ones that are in this view. If we were to zoom out and all of you know the front range, it might be you know 800 properties or so, um, mm -hmm. but you can definitely export these and we allow you to export up to 10,000 per month. So it doesn't all have to be buyers. The other, um, use case for the exports is when you're exporting leads. So, you know, you could export, like I said, ex absentee owners and vacancies and pre-foreclosures to bring leads in for acquisition. Right now we're thinking about, you know, working with agents, um, potentially giving us deals, but also the disposition side, but it's always great to have a good investor friendly agent on your team. Yeah. And it's good to have a lot of them <laughs> while you're at it. Oh yeah, um, so absolutely. I had um, pulled a list just like this of about 700 in the Denver area looking for new buyers that I don't know. And I immediately forgot that it was also a good opportunity to find list agents of those properties. And so this was a good reminder that there is another angle to even that 700 people list that I pulled. And my purpose was, again, I got that LLC. I had the whole list of LLCs all pulled from Privy, and then I took that and got them skip traced, and I'm reaching out to them every day. I had about five to 10 buyers a day. That's really good. What's a good KPI for people who are maybe getting started? Like how many buyers should they be adding to the list on a daily basis? So um, this is, I'm glad you asked this question because there's a difference in adding a email to your list and adding a relationship to your list and you want to add relationships. And so if it means you're only getting one to two good solid buy box relationships a day, you are doing better than somebody that just walked away with 200 emails. Um, yeah. And so that that kind of variance is going to change. But I, I say anywhere from two to five is a really reasonable, easy amount of buyers to add daily if you're coming from the dispo side. If you're coming with the attitude of, I better get a deal done in the next few weeks to, to make the right check and et cetera, then you really need to be closer to the, the 15 buyers a day um, that you're having conversations with and, and getting those numbers from, because then you're going to go find somebody like me who's after the contracts and say, hey, I was just talking to this great buyer. He wants this thing that's a little bit weird. Is there anything that you have that fits? And actually, I'm glad you brought this up because I have a property right now where somebody did bring it to me. It's theirs and under contract. And they're asking me to help them find a buyer. Well, it's very unique because the only thing that is going to make this profitable for any kind of buyer is if they're willing to add square footage. Like they're going to have to add square footage or they're going to have to dig into the basement so that the basement is new square footage or they're going to have to pop the top. Is there a way to search specifically for those kinds of buyers that will add square footage in any given area? 
You can look for pop tops, um, but you can't look for people who added square footage on okay. like outward, right? Okay. Um, there let's see here no there isn't there isn't a way to do that but there is a button right here called pop top where it's looking for and it it's kind of iffy honestly um but it, it's all in the data so what we're looking for is we're looking for the original listing was say like one story and then when they relist it at the second time they're actually um the the stories is more than one so that's that's what we're looking for here so if if it was listed as as a one story but it was really a two and then they put it at two on the last listing it may say it's a pop top when really it was just the difference between the original listing and the and the second listing does that make sense absolutely and for anybody who's holding their heads right now going what is a pop top one i'm sorry i didn't say it right off because <laughs> that was actually one of the first words that stumped me on like day two of my wholesaling journey like five years ago um somebody had said it and they were just rambling through it and i remember going what the heck pop top means we're taking off the roof we're adding an additional level and then we're putting that roof back on so from a, a one story to a two story is why we call that a pop top so here's a perfect example of a pop top okay so Right here, this house is on 481 South Clarkson Street. I click this property. It it has the look of a pop top, right? So it was a one-story brick ranch, and then they added this second story. Now, if we come down to the before and after section inside of Privy, here's the pre, here's the, what the house looked like before it was popped. Here's after. So this is it before you can see the brick. And it looks like, you know, obviously it's the exact same house. They bought it for 700,000. They sold it for 1.6 million. Now think about this, you guys, people talk about, oh, what you got, you can't find deals on the MLS. They bought this thing at 42% of the after repair value from the MLS. Didn't have to go in market or, you know, do any sort of cold calling, but this is a very unique skill set, And that's exactly what Corian is doing. She's got buyers who want to add square footage and going up is the easiest way to do it, especially in Denver mm -hmm. because their footprint, they have a certain amount of setback that they, they have to do per, uh, per code and per the zoning requirements. So they can't necessarily go back with square footage or out or forward uh, because they have to maintain that footprint. in so many of these areas, these lots in most of these areas aren't that big. Um, this is only 4,100 square feet. So there is nowhere to add extra square foot on this house except for up yeah so what do you think about this one this is pretty amazing right to see this transformation mm -hmm. no this is perfect and that answers really my question is that even though i might not be able to see people that did additions i can go into the area that this particular property is and i can even just look for and call the buyers that did the pop top because in this general scenario they're willing to take on big projects that is not an easy project um, which means that things like additions and that kind of thing they'll take on. Um, and for I had asked, like, what number do you use for the livable area? Um, and how do you account for differences in basements, whether it's finished or not? And this is a great question for Colorado specifically. We are notorious for weird basements um, as to whether or not a realtor will actually say that that is livable square footage or not. Um, I can only speak to my direct market because I've done that research for a basement in Colorado to be livable square footage, it actually has to be seven feet or higher, which is gonna be very difficult to find in anything that's like 1970s and older. Um, most of those basements are actually much shorter, which means that to make that livable, something else is gonna to have to change. And so for example, the property I'm working on right now, the only way to make the basement a livable square footage where I can add that is if we go into the basement and we dig to get to that seven feet. And people do this, by the way, which I didn't know originally, but dig oh, to get to that do. and then build out the basement that way. Oh, there are some people that, that do that. Like that's their niche. Like they look for houses that people are going away from that have low ceilings and they go in and they just dig them out. So they have whole entire crews of people to go in there with Home Depot buckets and just empty those basements out. It's definitely doable. 
Um, if you have any buyers that like that or anybody else has any Colorado buyers that like that, please feel free to find me on Instagram at Corey <laughs> and Wright, um, because that's specifically the kind of buyer I'm after for this particular property. Um, so I'm always going to go to the public records. I'm going to see what square footage it's listing as livable square footage. And normally I'm going to go out that unless they can show me that there is permitted additions that have been permitted that change that number. Um, but for the most part, I'm not including basements. If they are finished, I will consider including them, but then I want my comp to also have a finished square basement. Yeah, in a perfect world, you guys, you just want to compare above grade square footage. So from the ground up is, is how appraisers and agents do it. Um, if you've got a finished basement in Colorado, you can typically um, include another you know 50% of the square foot that's in that basement if it's finished. And it has to have that seven plus uh, height on on the the ceiling, but it's still a really it's a gray area. And buyers love actually negotiating against square footage in basements because it is such a gray area. And even though they might be able to get that benefit on the back end when they sell it, they certainly don't want to buy using that as value because it it, it makes their margins smaller. Um, so if, if the the one on this one, Corian is rc mm -hmm. design studio llc so i bet you they have a website like they this is the kind of company that has probably a website that you could just google and find okay how about we do that anybody want to see me find a buyer for this particular property yeah I mean, let's yeah. see rc design studio llc um you're right they pop right up <laughs> and they have a five rating on facebook there you go contact Let's see if i can get a number out of it Ooh, looks like we have a family business which is always exciting i love finding like family business flippers because I can bring so much value to them <laughs> by just making their flips even more, more connected. Let's see, no number came up. While I'm continuing to look for this number, I did wanna answer, I believe it was, yeah, Jackie's question. And she's asking how many contacts per day. And it depends on whether you're on the ACK or Dispo side or et cetera, but the easy number is 50 conversations a day. You wanna have 50 connections to really start a good funnel. Is there a phone number there oh, that we can call? call? Finally, let's see. By the way, the agent on this one was Kelly Hudson. I'm just curious if you if you hear that name. Hello. Hi, this is Corey Ann. I'm trying to reach um, I'm trying to reach whoever made this beautiful flip, 481 South Clarkson Street. Did I hit the right person? You did hit the right person. This is beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit of a fan when it comes to nice properties in Denver. And I noticed how pretty this is. Is this something you do all the time? Um, uh, are you looking to sell, buy? Are you a wholesaler? What's your story? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm licensed here in the state of Colorado, but mostly I focus on investment properties. And I do that in a very traditional sense of the wholesaling. I get a lot of off markets that are ugly and need people like you that can make them beautiful. So I only buy off market. So okay. if it's on the MLS and you wholesale it to me, I, I, I'm not interested. Totally understand. So off market only is your cup of tea. Do you often take on things like this pop top? I always do pop tops. Yes. Ooh, you're the kind of guy. Who do you I'm work for? for? Is there? Are you uh, independent or are you wholesaling? So uh, I'm licensed company? with LPT Realty, but I serve as the acquisitions director for Kickflip Consultants. Okay. Are you and you're new to Denver market? 
No, I've actually been here licensed for a few years, but it doesn't seem like I've run across you before, which seems quite strange. Um, Kickflip Consultants is a newer company. I used to be with another company. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So do you mind if I just give you a call a little bit later on if I find something that's off market where the value can be in an addition? Do you ever go yeah. a different direction than a pop top? Will you do um, like excavate a basement or addition in the backyard? Um, I do those, but I mean, it has to have enough um, value in that. Yeah, I mean, I that's what I do. I either pop the top or dig out a basement and put an addition on. Um, yes. Is there anything specific you're looking for on your return and investment or your purchase price in terms of the ARV? Um, I like things that are between 1.2 and 1.8 selling. Okay, that's great to know. Okay, I'll make sure that the ARV stays around there. And then I'm sorry, I'm calling just based off of your LLC name. I don't know your name personally. I'm Rebecca, I'm Rebecca. Rebecca, it's very, very nice to meet you, Rebecca. My name's Corey Ann. Hi, Corey Ann. Um, Do you I get many off-market projects? Yes, we normally are selling about three to five of them in Colorado and Florida a month. Um, right now I have one, I think we're going to lock up that's going to be off market and might be the right fit for you, but I want to go ahead and finalize that and make sure the numbers work before I waste any of your time. Okay. Um, and I obviously work in Denver. Um, I think I'm kind of interested in scooching into like old Cherry Creek and stuff, but, um, I, like I said, my price point is a higher price point than some of the other renovators in town. It's what I'm better at. I can tell that just by flipping through these photos. I really do mean it when I say I'm a nerd for it. And I, I'm also an artist and a painter originally. So anytime I see great design, I, I get the goosebumps. It, it was a beautiful house. <laughs> um, so thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for your time. I look forward to more conversations and hopefully about something that can make you some money. Okay, sounds great. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. That was awesome. <laughs> wow. She is wow. legit. She, she is, is a legit. legit buyer. And what's so cool about this is like, it's going to be, you're not going to have as many deals to send her, but when you do, you could have a hundred thousand dollar assignment fee on one of these kinds of properties. Yeah. And I, and anytime somebody can give me like specifics, I know that they're, they're a great buyer and I'm excited about that. The specifics are make sure it's off market and I want my ARV to be up there past a million. I'm like, check, check. You got it. I can go find that for you. And now I have somebody I can go personally shop for, even if she doesn't fit this other property that I have. Um, so I got that buyer from Privy, y'all. Um, if you guys don't have Privy, I highly, highly suggest it. This gives you so much data and information that you can grow your business in a lot of different directions. I was on the phone twice today, but I also got two connections that I could utilize and work with in different ways. You can tell she is connected um, because oh, yeah. she's like, I've never heard of you before. And I'm like, oh, um, well, I'll make sure you do from here on out. Um, right. And yeah, so I'm very excited about that. And I want you guys to have privy so that your business can also grow just like this conversation is going to grow mine. So if you don't have privy, the code is DAMJI. Put that in the promo code and you're going to get 30% off the annual plan or 20% off your first month if you go that route. And I highly, highly suggest it. Tavon put fire in his comment saying that was awesome. And... It is very interesting that he did that because your house was on fire today. Like we should do that more often. Like I think before every time we do a live, we just light a little fire in your house, create some smoke because you operate at a whole new level. Yeah. It's something to do with the oxygen carbon dioxide levels are, are really bringing me up guys. <laughs> um, well, thank you. Tavon is the man. He has got buyers in Orlando. So if you've got deals in Orlando, you should hit Tavon up. Oh, Just yeah. a reminder, this everybody, great. this is easier with people. And coming here to Wholesale 101 is like step one. Um, you're making great connections with me and Benson. We're real people that really respond to our DMs. And on top of that, 
everybody in the chat is actively working on getting their business to be better. So be loud. If you're working in a specific area, let everybody in that chat know and find the person that's going to help you get to that closed deal as soon as possible. I can't believe we're almost at the end of our hour already. I know. I wish we had time for another call, but I don't think that we do. But you guys, we couldn't have crammed more value into that hour than we just did. Like we really broke it down. Uh, we got, there was no voicemails, no double calls, no triple calls. Like people picking up on the first call, actual, the actual people we wanted to connect with, they were responsive. They weren't trying to get off the phone. And that's, you know, because Corianne's a whiz on, on the phone as well. And she creates an environment where they want to be there. Um, she's conversational and she builds that trust very, very quickly. And you could see both of them started to divulge information that otherwise they probably wouldn't have given out to just the average person. So watch these again. All these are on Jamil's channel. They're going to be there. You can go back and rewatch them, take notes, maybe even write out some of the things that Corianne is saying, some of the scripts, you know, some of those smooth things that she says that sound just really conversational and build trust quickly. And add that to your repertoire. Start using it in your own conversations. Start testing it out. But the most important thing, you guys, is just get on the phone. Get on the phone. You can do it. It's okay if you make mistakes, but perfect your craft. Watch these weekly. You know, get confident. Watch Corianne. And sooner or later, you're going to start building out an amazing buyers list of actual end buyers. You're going to be able to talk with agents, get agents on your list that want to work with you. And then it's, at that point, you can start bringing in the leads, making some money. For anybody that's worried about picking up the phone, I go ahead and write this one down. This is this is called your worst case scenario. And here it is. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I'm, I know that my partner does. I'll call you back in five minutes. Sound OK? That's it. That's your that's your key to I don't know how to answer you, but I'll get off. I will go find my partners. I'll find everybody I work with in this chat. I'll go talk to my Astro fam. I'll get the answer for you and I'll call you right back. It can always be your worst case scenario. Yep. And nobody died. <laughs> Guys, nobody got hurt. And nobody died. Amazing. It's a simple business where we're adding a lot of value to the right people. And it's our job to filter quickly, which is why we use Grivy. Um, next week, Benson, we have not one, but two great guests. And I am super duper excited to bring them in front of our, our Wholesaling 101 family. Awesome. Good. Are you just teasing us with who those guests are? Or is it still kind of behind the curtain? <laughs> I'm teasing you. Of course I'm teasing you. I just want you guys to know they're going to be good. That's all you need to know. Awesome. It's not just me. Well, that's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Benson. This is always fun hanging out with you guys. This is the best part of my week. Thanks, Wholesale 101 class. Go kick some butt. We'll talk to you all soon. Thanks, you guys, for being here. Thanks, Natasha. Bye, Corianne. See you guys. Have a great week. Bye.